Hey everyone, so ooh, there's so much buzz about this. Okay, so I had a client call cancel right now, so I was gonna be busy for the next hour and a half, but I'm not. So I'm gonna answer some more questions about this. And as they come to you, please share them, post them, let me know because I am happy to answer them. Okay, so someone on my last video asked about uh, when you are immune compromised and you're traveling, what are some tips? So, I'm technically not immune compromised, but I treat my, myself like I am because I went through treatment last year. Okay, technically is the wrong word because I guess you could still say I am because technically uh, your immune system can be defunct up to a year after treatment and I have not hit the year mark. So there are some long-term immune system things in my body that might not quite be up to par yet. Um, but I haven't been viewing myself as um, chronically low immune system. But the question was, if you have a compromised immune system and you will be traveling, what are some tips? Okay, so first of all, if you have a compromised immune system and there is any option whatsoever to be traveling over the next month, don't do it, okay? If you are trying to go anywhere out of the states, that would be a definite no. Um, you probably can't go anyways because most of the places you'd want to go are closed off right now. Um... If you are traveling by plane in the States, if it's within driving distance, I would recommend doing that instead for sure. So um, it is just harder to protect yourself when you're around that many people. And if you do have a compromised immune system and more stuff is kind of floating around, it's hard. So, but let's talk about if you cannot avoid it and you have to travel and it is within the States and it's still a viable option for you, what are some things that you can do? Okay. So the first thing is to make sure you have alcohol-based wipes and that you thoroughly wipe down your seats. Now, interestingly enough, my mom was telling me because, you know, we were considering, you know, before the, it got banned, like, what do we do? And she said she had read an article that Delta is like really, that was the airline that we were taking. She said that Delta has come out with some stuff where they are like, Hey guys, just so you know, we're taking a lot of precautions. We're cleaning the seats, all this kind of stuff. So that's great because I think they're probably cleaning the airplanes more than they are. And they were talking about the benefits of their HEPA filters and, um, you know, how the recirculating air is not going to be a problem, etc. So that's great. But I don't ever personally trust other people to be as um, clean as I am. I'm a little OCD when it comes to those things. Um, so I would highly recommend, I do this anyways, but I would be very detailed in this circumstance where I would bring wipes on the flight. So I would always wipe down my airplane seat and my tray table and everything, the um, seat belt that, you know, I, I literally do this every time you guys, People you think would be looking at me like I'm crazy. More often than not, some of them might, but some of them are like, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. So don't feel embarrassed about doing this stuff. You're protecting yourself. So alcohol-based, remember in my last video, I said that's really important. Alcohol is what is killing this stuff. So cleaning off every area that you're going to be touching because how you get this is by touching water droplets that have not died yet on a surface and then touching your face, okay? So wiping down everything that you're going to be in contact with, okay? The second thing is um, some sort of alcohol-based hand sanitizer or air spray, or I was even going to bring, I had a, um, I had a, cause this was gonna be a long flight. It was an international flight. This was an overnight deal. So I was bringing all the things. Um, is a, a handheld diffuser. So you can bring one of those blends like Thieves or um, you know make your own with cloves and eucalyptus and tea tree and whatever. And you can spray that in the air around you to help purify the air. Um, so that's definitely an option. Another thing that you might wanna do is, I mean, if you are immunocompromised, I'm, I'm just gonna list out things you might think about because you can get really serious. And this is definitely not something I'd say, you know, if you have a really great immune system and it's a normal, healthy time, you don't necessarily have to do all this. But if you have a compromised immune system and you're traveling and there's a lot going on, these are all things you could do. Um, there are even portable air purifiers um, that you can wear around your neck. And you want to make sure it's from a reasonable company that they are really, really good. You want to research like how it purifies the air, all this kind of stuff. And uh, there's one company, I can't remember the name of it, but it's really, really good. 
They have little tiny ones that you can carry, you can actually wear on your chest and take them when you're traveling. I think it purifies up to three feet around you. So very, very helpful in situations like this. All right, another tip that you can do when you're traveling, and you've probably heard a lot about this, is the masks situation. Okay, so it's not all this it's not all all protective okay masks are not all protective especially those stupid little surgical ones okay don't get those it's basically like thin paper okay dumb you want to get one that's layered that has a filtering mechanism and that is like really intense like it's actually going to filter the air and particles around you if it doesn't it's not worth even doing that the other benefit if um regardless of the the level of it um, would be that it stops you from touching your face. So that is one benefit to wearing a mask. If you are getting a high quality mask that does purify the air, that does fit you appropriately, and that does have layers of protection, then it can have an added benefit of helping you breathe in there. Now here's another thing, with immune compromised people, I would probably say to wear a mask anytime you fly anyways, only because you are probably more sensitive to smells and chemicals and perfumes and things like that, which in a flight, in travel, you cannot avoid. People next to you are gonna wear perfume, you know, some kid next to you is gonna be coughing, whatever. So that is honestly something that after treatment, I wore a mask um, just because I wanted to breathe um, you know, I did not want to breathe the chemicals in the air, the smells, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot that goes on that is stressful during flights, especially for someone that does have an, a low, low immune system, can't talk. So um, there are pros and cons to the masks. They are not a end all be all. Here, here are a couple of the weaknesses, okay? Um, basically, if you take it off or you touch it when you've touched something else, null and void, it's not gonna work for you anymore. It did not just save you. However, if you keep it on the whole time, it does have an air purification mechanism. You're washing your hands before you take it off and you maybe you wear it the whole time you're in the flight and you don't take it off and all this kind of stuff, then it will actually protect you from touching your face. That's one of the main benefits that you can get from doing that. Okay, so that is definitely a consideration. So making sure you're wiping down your area, consider an air purifier, um, make sure you know you have those immune type boosting supplements, that sort of thing. Personally, I was gonna get a vitamin C, two vitamin C IVs before travel. So if that is an option for you and you have a low immune system, I would absolutely prioritize that. I would talk with your physician about like, what's the max I can get either in grams that day or how many doses can I do? Can I do like three days prior to my flight? Like what's reasonable for you? But I would take that very seriously if you're, if you're going on a flight and you have a, a low immune system. Someone else asked me about pregnancy um, and she's really nervous about this whole situation. So with pregnancy, uh, it's again, it's you're a little bit more susceptible. And so I would view that as the same type of situation as a immunocompromised individual. So just taking it a little more seriously, if you don't have to go into public places, don't. Um, you know, you can go grocery shopping, but maybe you do take your own alcohol wipes with you. Um, maybe you kind of try the, to stay away from, you know, people and crowds. Um, make sure you are supporting your body every way you can when possible when pregnant. So things like taking your probiotics. Um, there's another supplement I wanted to recommend. It's called Mega IgG. That is supportive to your immune system, just generally speaking. So immunoglobulins are part of your immune system. So if you have um, an immune system reaction against a food, for example, that's part of your immunoglobulin. So IgG, you've probably heard about food sensitivity testing, IgG testing. Um, that's an immunoglobulin immune system response against different proteins and reactions in your body. So um, basically, when you are taking IgG as a supplement, it goes in, acts as your own immune system, helps bind toxins and flush them out of your system. So it's very gut supportive. It's very immune supportive, specifically if you have any gut distress, which is why you know I use it with some of my clients. Um, so if you just wanna be proactive, it's a very easy thing to do. So if you've ever heard of colostrum, which is what's in mother's breast milk that helps baby build baby's immune systems right after um, they're born in that first um, few days after they're born and you're breastfeeding them, 
colostrum, one of the reasons that it's so effective in that area is because it is packed with immunoglobulins. So you're getting part of the mother's immune system. So when we take it in supplement form, we're getting bovine immunoglobulins or bovine colostrum. And um, from the cow, as long as it's from a high quality source and everything, of course, you wanna make sure it's a high quality. Um, but when you're getting this from the cow, it acts in your body very similarly to how you would if you were having mother's breast milk. So basically, it's an, an immune system support. It's going to help bind toxins. It's only going to be helpful. Now, I'm not saying that if you you know, get a flu or something like this that you should mega dose on IgG and it's going to cure it. I'm not saying that. But in terms of strengthening your system, supporting your body, this is absolutely a preventative measure that you can help keep your body strong, especially if you're getting nervous nervous about these situations. I wrote a note here. Oh, I couldn't read it. Okay. It says no travel. I just mentioned that. Don't travel if you're pregnant. Um, like I said, if you can avoid flying, well, you can't fly internationally. If you can avoid flying, um, across the country, I would probably do that right now. Just out of an abundance of caution. If you can drive somewhere, that's just going to be better. If you are in a hotel room, bring an air purifier. These are things I do anyways, guys, but bring an air purifier, okay? I um, have a portable one that does like 100 to 200 square feet. It's perfect for a hotel room. Um, definitely, bring, so the kind that I use is from, I think it's called hypoair.com. I think that's right. And um, basically it uh, purifies the air by releasing ions into the air and, and, uh, you can see there's little lights um, on the thing. Anyways, Google it. Um, get an air purifier. Um, do, do some research in terms of what might work for you, but make sure it's a high quality one is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I definitely would take that if you're traveling um, in a hotel room. Also the alcohol wipes, you're gonna wanna wipe like the obvious stuff down, obviously handles, obviously telephones if you're gonna touch that, um, light switches, and of course, um, one of the most touched things, the TV remote, if you're going to touch that at all. Okay. So this isn't to freak you out, but people are asking like, what can I do? You know, I'm getting nervous. These are the things you want to do. Um, definitely with pregnancy, uh, dose yourself that vitamin C. Um, with pregnancy, you can technically take biocidin, although I don't think they, I've, I had a biocidin representative tell me that you can take it when you're pregnant and breastfeeding. Here is the caution about taking it when pregnant or breastfeeding. If you have a lot of gut pathogens, then biocidin basically goes in, it breaks up the home that they live in and it kills them, which isn't bad, right? Except that the, that can cause a little bit of toxicity in your body if you're not flushing it out right away. And anything that happens in terms of that going on in your body can, um, obviously transfer to the baby and so you don't really want to do any sort of pathogenic protocol. However, a low dose where um, it's going to be supportive to your immune system, it's going to be antiviral and you're not going to get this big pathogen die off is something to consider. You would have to make your own personal decision about that. Talk to a practitioner um, to see if that may be a right decision for you. I've used biocidin so much. Um, I love it so much. And um, I, I know that I don't have like all these parasites and bacteria to like kill off now. So I wouldn't personally feel too bad using it. Um, but if you are just not sure, you may feel less good about it. However, a really safe way to get a similar uh, support from biocidin would to simply be using their toothpaste. Um, it's called dental sedin and uh, it has biocidin in the toothpaste. Now, a lot of your gut health starts in your mouth because your gums, you know, what goes straight to your bloodstream, which goes to your brain, which goes down to your gut, blah, 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 blah. So a lot of our gut health actually starts in our mouth. So if you don't quite feel comfortable taking biocidin because you are pregnant, you can brush your teeth with dental seed in and at least get some of the benefits that way. You're gonna be killing off a lot of bacteria. Um, one more thing that I did not talk about in, um, in the previous video that's helpful for everybody, regardless of immune system uh, levels or not, is uh, something like a nasal spray that has things like silver in it or zinc. 
or both. Um, and so again, if you are getting infected by this getting into your mouth or your nose and you are traveling or you just want to be preventative for any reason, you can shoot these nasal sprays or throat drops or throat sprays in your mouth and up your nose to actually kill and catch the bacteria or the viruses before you start getting infected. So you basically want to avoid touching, but if you want that double layer, maybe you have a mask on, you take it off, you do some nasal sprays and some throat sprays. People are recommending that you maybe gargle with some silver or get some zinc lozenges and as they dissolve, you know, keep them in the back of your throat, um, shoot silver up your nose, that sort of thing. So obviously do your research and figure out what's going to work for you. But these are just all suggestions in terms of things that are known to be supportive to your immune system and, um, you know, working against viruses. So I hope that that is uh, helpful to you guys. I love answering your questions. If you have any more, please let me know and I'll talk to you soon.